Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Karen Warren Coleman, and I'm the Vice President for Campus Life and Student Services at the University of Chicago. We are thrilled that you could join us here today to mark a milestone in the life of the university as we announce the architect and design of the signature new residence hall and dining commons planned to open on the north region of our campus in the fall of 2016. It is a pleasure to first introduce my colleague, John W. Boyer, Dean of the College, and the Martin A. Ryerson Distinguished Service Professor in History. Well, a warm wel welcome to everyone. We gather today to celebrate the major new investment in student housing and student life at the university. Over the past 15 years, the trustees of the university have been implementing a massive reinvestment strategy to improve undergraduate student housing at the college at the University of Chicago. First, the Pulaski Residential Commons opened in 2001, designed by Le Ricardo Legretta, just north of Regenstein Library and housing 712 students. And then the great South Campus Residential Complex opened in 2009, designed by Goody Clancy on 61st Street, housing 800 students. And now a magnificent new building designed by Jean Gang and her colleagues, also housing about 800 students on 55th Street, which will open in 2016. When the university first opened its doors in 1892, most undergraduates came to Chicago from, from, from the city. They lived at home. They were commuter kids. But over the course of the 20th century, this pattern shifted. And by the 1970s, the college had become a national and indeed an international college drawing students from across the nation and around the world. In recent decades, the university has recognized that a distinguished college that aspires to be the destination for the most gifted and talented students in the world must have excellent housing resources, and hence the decision of the trustees to recapitalize the college's housing system. As early as the 1920s, university leaders led by President Ernest Burton imagined a substantially residential college at the heart of our great university. They were convinced about, quote, the fundamental importance in the educational process of habitual discussions outside the classroom, of wholesome companionship and work and play. We know, they continued, that a university ought to provide for every student a splendid opportunity to develop the qualities which will make him or her a good neighbor and a useful citizen, end quote. Those arguments are, in my view, as true and as valid today as they were 80 years ago. The college has changed significantly over the last 20 years. In the last 15 years, we've increased the size of our college from 3,400 to 5,700 students becoming the largest academic unit at the university. Applications to our college have increased tremendously from 4,000 in 1992 to almost 31,000 this year. In 1992, we accepted 72% of those who applied for admission to the college, and this year it was only 9%. In a word, very large numbers of the most talented students and their families in America now want to join this very special academic community. And yet much has not changed. The core curriculum, the intensive and vibrant academic culture of the university, a learning environment filled with highly gifted and talented students and dedicated teachers that is among the best in the world. In fact, our recent success reflects the fact that talented young Americans and their families value Chicago's traditional intellectual rigor and our dedication to the professional success of our students set in a highly supportive community of scholars. The college's housing system plays a fundamental role in shaping and sustaining this academic culture. What is unique about Chicago is that we are a 24-7 learning environment where learning does not end in the classroom but flows out into the residential view beyond. That is why the construction of these great new residence halls, of which Gene Gang's building is the latest, is so essential. They are dynamic, commanding, and beautiful buildings, but they are also essential parts of our academic culture. They help us to create the very culture of learning and scholarship on which the university depends and for which it is justly famous. But these buildings are also parts of a larger urban ar architectural fabric of this great city. They signify that the University of Chicago is truly Chicago's university, a place of great aesthetic inspiration and visual creativity, where each year thousands of young people come to study and to live, and many of whom will become permanent citizens of this great city for their personal and professional careers. Harold H. Swift, the long-serving chairman of our Board of Trustees and an eminent Chicago civic leader in the interwar period, was a, a very dedicated supporter of the idea of a residential college, once argued that the University of Chicago needed and deserved for its students, quote, a most beautiful group of residential buildings that would result in an artistic triumph and in a great civic asset. 
I believe that the architectural plans that we are now about to present to you are such an artistic triumph and a great civic asset, an asset for the university, for our neighbors and our friends in the Hyde Park community, and for the city of Chicago itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. This project presents us with a unique opportunity to advance the quality of campus life and the student experience, and to tailor a major residence hall and dining commons to the university's distinctive college house system. The university is committed to creating a community of scholars, and the house system represents the particular way we foster that community among undergraduates. Each college house brings together 50 to 100 students of different backgrounds, interests, and areas of study to share a common space and a common spirit. In their houses, students learn about the college's academic and cultural norms and interact with a diverse group of undergraduate peers, resident heads, and RAs. The college house system is led by faculty members who serve as resident masters and who foster engagement with students on the part of their faculty colleagues through a multitude of intellectual, social, and cultural activities. In the college house system, students not only live together, but eat at a common table, share study breaks, take part in programs and events together at home, around the campus, and in the broader Hyde Park and Chicago communities. House life stimulates and nurtures the intellectual, social, and emotional growth of individual students and serves as a cornerstone in the foundation of the community to which students in the college belong. In short, the college house has become a home, a place where our students live, learn, dine, and play together in communities that help to engender a strong sense of belonging, affiliation, and interdependence. In a few minutes, you will hear directly from the architect who is leading the design of the new residence hall and dining commons about the integration of the goals and ideals, ideals of the college house system in this project. The plans incorporate double, single and apartment style rooms in this residence hall to support 800 college students in eight houses led by two resident masters. The variety and quality of rooms will respond to the changing needs of students as they progress from their first year through their fourth year in the college. Dynamic and beautiful community spaces including lounges, recreational spaces, study rooms, and the dining rooms will help create spontaneous, informal connections among students and serve as a setting for the rituals and events that will occur there for the next generation of students in the college and beyond. The new residence hall and dining commons and surrounding amenities will bring to life our vision for building community effectively and with grace, integrating all aspects of a student's life. With this project, we will raise the quality of the residential experience at the University of Chicago to a new level. I hope that you will be just as intrigued and delighted as I am by the early design concept to see how the plans not only support student and community life, but also create a dynamic new center of campus life in the Campus North region. Now I am pleased to introduce my colleague, Steve Wiesenthal, Associate Vice President and University Architect, who will tell us more about this project in the context of the broader campus and introduce the architect and team that has been selected. Thank you, Karen. From its beginnings as a series of self-contained quadrangles defined by collegiate Gothic architecture, uh, the University of Chicago has expanded over more than a century into a diverse layering of architecture, expressing an evolution of attitudes about campus planning and design. First and foremost, we are all about the exchange of ideas. We design buildings and open spaces that encourage interaction and sustain the settings that bring together our students, faculty, staff, and visitors. That is central to our unique academic community and central to the project we are unveiling today. We began last fall with a list of 16 uh, arch architectural firms of international renown. And through a rigorous and sometimes difficult and painful selection process, uh, we limited or we invited four finalists to generate design concepts. Today, it is my privilege and honor to introduce to you an incredibly creative architect who has pushed the boundaries of design practice through research, attention to urban ecology, and beautiful forms inspired by patterns in nature. The winner of a MacArthur Genius Grant and numerous architectural design awards, 
for projects ranging from a small turtle-like pavilion in a zoo to a, an 82-story wavy tower. Uh, she has partnered with Greg Werner and his Mortensen construction team. And Greg, I'd like you to stand, please. <laughs> and together, they have imagined a new and open, engaging 21st century quadrangle and indeed a new gateway into the University of Chicago campus. And so now I'd like to turn the program over to our architect. The idea of community is very attractive to us, so a lot of the projects that we look for are, are trying to understand how community is built, and this project is perfect for that because we were trying to design a space that would be really like a home for students. At the same time, create something that is open, welcoming, and engaging to the community. I'm Jeannie Gang, I'm the principal and founder of Studio Gang Architects, and this project is the Campus North Residence Hall and Dining Commons. Our idea here was to create a real gateway, a portal into the university. Our design really started with looking at the house system that the university already has. Students live together, know each other. We created literally like almost like a three-story house, a home within three levels of residences. This house hub becomes the core of the design. Students can really socialize, get to know each other. It has all different kinds of spaces for hanging out, watching movies, studying, eating, sharing, preparation of food, all these things that happen in a real house. We create an experience for dining. It's more like going to a restaurant or a cafe. We've connected the community commons, which is a social space for students, to the house tables so that after hours, those tables can be opened up and used for studying. The whole purpose of it is to reinforce academic achievement, the scholarly life of the student. What we've imagined is almost a destination space in the center of this quad and that we call the North Commons. And so we're using the architecture to create courtyards and gardens that are oriented to encourage natural ventilation, so really using environmental criteria it's interesting because the site is actually located almost in the heart of Hyde Park. And it's also located on a very important place in relation to the campus because it's at the very north edge. So it becomes this place that could be, you know, front door to the campus. We looked at the ways that people could move around and where people were coming from to find the energy of the site. We really wanted to respond to that and connect it in many ways to the city beyond. Thank you so much. We are thrilled to be selected as the architect for this project. I speak for everyone, my team, studio gang, our consultants and engineers, uh, that we are just totally thrilled to be designing this and developing this project together with the University of Chicago, also the community, and Hyde Park. Um, I'm, today I get to tell you a little bit about the design. I'm going to go into a little more detail, and then after that we can uh, watch a short video, fly through, and then take questions. Um, so one of, one of the mo most interesting things, I think, uh, that uh, Stephen mentioned earlier is that the university's goals for their architecture is really to promote the exchange of ideas. So how does one do that with, with architecture and urban design? Um, here you can see uh, the, the campus plan uh, with uh, the site located here at the north edge of the entire campus. So focusing in on that uh, one piece, one, make it connective and promote the ideas. Um, design team was um, to, to really conceive of it not only as a site itself, but really think about the entire north um, area and series of blocks and treat them almost as a new quadrangle that's on the north side of the campus. So focus on those connections. Um, the east-west connections, the north-south connections, connecting the green spaces, 
um, and developing almost a brand new connection, a diagonal that would take students from the, the campus out to the city, out to the community of Hyde Park, and also invite the community into the campus. So it's almost the be beginning of this new era of, of very much of an open campus, one that uh, promotes this, this exchange and urban um, activity. We were inspired by these portals on the campus. They're just um, architectural elements that signify entry um, and passage. And so what we did with our design was to create one of those right at that north uh, east corner. You actually pass right underneath this building and right through into the heart of that campus north quadrangle. Um, so you can see that here, the diagonal we called it. So in, uh, um, this corner becomes very important as this connection to uh, Hyde Park. And so we created a public, uh, kind of an urban plaza with retail um, all along the, the edge at 55th Street, uh, creating almost an urban um, active edge along 55th, and then um, a tree-lined edge along South University, which mirrors the other side of the street and its residential character. So those became two of the important edges. Um, and then the di diagonal of bringing people in into this heart called the North Commons. And that North Commons space is right adjacent to the new dining commons area. So it'll be um, a very active hub where people uh, will be moving through there, but also being able to rest at this, at this commons and use it just as a traditional quadrangle. I love this view. This is a looking north along University Avenue. Um, we removed a few trees for the view, but the trees will be lining this, this street. Um, and you can see the Henry Crown Field House here and how the, the scale of our building steps down to this residential scale along South University. And the other thing that really resonates on this view is the relationship between the vertical um, openings of the Henry Crown a kind of collegiate Gothic architecture and our, our emphasized vertical openings on, on the new building, making a, a very striking relationship between old and new, but still having something in common. This view is looking across the north uh, commons, this place I was showing you, right outside the dining commons, and, and looking at a view of a walkway along the Henry Crown Fieldhouse animated by art and sculpture. Um, so we want to integrate and extend the influence of the Smart Museum in that east-west direction. Um, and then you're looking at um, two of the residence hall buildings with larger openings that I'll talk about in a minute that are uh, the house hubs as seen from the exterior. Being inside the building is going to be quite thrilling too, uh, as it is here in this building at the Logan Center where you're able to get some vistas and some perspective. And from our building along the north side, you'll be able to have views such as this, looking out over the rest of the campus and really connecting the different architecture of the campus together into one um, very strong, cohesive whole. We've also really worked carefully with the landscape uh, design as represented in the model, which we'll show you in a little bit. Um, but using green, green roofs and, and different uh, gardens and courtyards and really trying to keep as much green space on the site as possible. This is a view of one of the courtyards created by the buildings that is um, for the residents. So this is up one level and, and kind of enclosed, um, a secure place for the students to hang out and um, have this more fluid indoor-outdoor relationship. Um, in this view, you're looking from a bird's eye angle through the portal um, at the dining commons, and you can see this, this um, bosk of mature trees that we um, planned for the design. Coming from the north common space, moving outward toward Hyde Park, it's again, it's a two-way portal where um, community is invited in and students are also extending out into Hyde Park. Um, you extend out through this, uh, these large colonnade and extend out into the city um, with, surrounded by a very dynamic uh, play of light and shadow. Um, we were asked also, one of the other goals of the university is to 
um, enhance the identity and character of their existing architecture. And so as, as a contemporary architect, it's always a challenge. How, how do you do that with, with um, a, a series of, of Gothic style architecture? So we, we were excited by the challenge of, um, this is a column of, of our building uh, vignettes here and juxtaposed with some traditional qualities that we find in Gothic architecture. So we were really excited about extracting this quality of the depth of the facade, something we've lost um, you know, as we've moved into modern architecture. The facades keep getting thinner and thinner, um, and also expressing this verticality in the building. Um, we lo looked at not to try to replicate uh, Gothic architecture, but find some logic in this form this is a, a window called intersecting tracery. So tracery was the elements that held the glass in place. So with our building, we tried to come up with a new form of, of tracery that is informed by the geometry of what's inside the building. And I'll talk about this a little bit more, but we've, um, um, Karen mentioned the house system. So from 50 to 100 students live together in, in an individual house and they, they have a chance to get to know each other as friends, as collaborators and, and um, mentors throughout their four years of school. And we wanted them to be as close together as possible. So um, in the structure of, of this particular building, there are three houses and the students that live there are living on those three floors. Uh, so to create the house hubs, we, um, we put the house hub right in the center of, of each of the floors so that no one is more than one floor away from the middle level. And these are three-story spaces. So imagine like taking a three-story house and intersecting it into a modern building. And, and that is what creates uh, this interesting building and the length of the building and the orientation of these large spaces. So that geometry then set up our exterior facade. This is a picture of the model. You can see into the, the house hubs here, the three house hubs that I was showing you. Um, and, and again, back to this depth, this is Rosenwald Hall in, on the university campus. Um, at that time in architectural history, it was possible to have individual stonemasons and carvers employed, hundreds of them employed to carve out these incredible uh, three-dimensional warped surfaces um, and you know today it's impossible to apply that amount of, of technique to a building such as this but we've found that uh, through the development of our exterior skin um, we can create uh, such a panel um, using today's technology and creating again that, that beauty and depth in the facade system. So it's just a close-up of the rendering that starts to show how the play of light and shadow will work on that uh, building. Again, the, the introduction of this height and the along 55th um, um, with um, retail animating the base, um, a connection through to, the, to the, new, the new portal through to the campus. Um, at night, on the second level, um, we placed uh, many of the community spaces so the, that the students, uh, as they um, have their receptions and lectures and evening um, activities, this, this view of campus life can be seen from the, from the street and is no longer hidden away. And so there's really a, a direct, a more um, direct connection between student life and city life. Some nice features as well. We placed uh, the reading room at the very top of the building on the northeast corner uh, with views all around to the city beyond the lake and to Hyde Park. And we've made these really flexible spaces so that they can um, be with furniture that moves in and out that, so those things can change function in the summer and serve the university community in other ways. And then finally to the house hubs, these are the, the three-story homes inter, intersecting the buildings that will really be a place where students can study together, learn together, get to know each other, form those important friendships and collaborations that we know today are vital to the success of our students and to the success of, of um, their careers. 
And so th this collaboration zones are built right into the building um, and, and provide this, this necessary home base for the students. And finally, the, the design of the rooms. Um, we are very interested in the sustainable performance of the buildings and um, have high goals for the project. And part of that, the sustainable goal is, is you know, recognizing that uh, fresh air is important to our, all of our performance. And we've created a window with, with this uh, decorative grill and protective grill there so that people can, the students can actually open their windows all the way, so 100% open and get fresh air. And we're also doing other things with the rooms to, um, to ameliorate the, the sun exposure in certain orientations and to create comfort. And that's, that's one of the main goals, and as well as reducing all the overall energy consumption of, of the building, moving toward a greener future. And now at this time, I'm going to walk you through a little, just a fly-through video, and I'll probably narrate and talk over it. Um, and then uh, that'll be it. <laughs> so some of the views you've already seen, this is along South University. Um, the lowest building relating to the residential scale. And you can see the three-dimensional panels in there. You see the portal, um, the building. And now we're moving through what that would be like entering into the campus's new front door. This is the dining commons. This will be um, accessible to the whole university community and to the public uh, uh, with really incredible dining options much better than when I was in school. <laughs> and you can see this connection with the house tables um, and, and connections to all the other student community spaces. These are the community commons, so each, there are two of them, and, and they serve, um, each one serves 400 students, two different communities, um, but connected together at the front of the building overlooking the plaza. And now we're going to look um, out over toward the southwest, out the window and the bridge. So this is the view um, of the, the community commons, a new quadrangle for North Campus. Here's the private courtyard again. And then um, moving into the house hubs, the three-story open homes inside the buildings. I think this will be a really unique place that um, will be highly desirable to for potential students and their parents. The individual rooms. This room is shown as, as a double, but there are, as Karen said, there are single rooms and even apartments for the upperclassmen. Um, finally, the, this, this is the reading room. Um, with the spectacular orientations toward the city and beyond. Thank you very much. We got any sound here? Thank you. If I could invite the speakers back. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming out on a Tuesday afternoon and thank everybody who tuned in for the live webcast. We appreciate you taking time out. This is exciting for us. Um, we hope this is the beginning of a conversation that's going to go on for months and stretch into a year or two as we get this project underway and completed. We don't have a lot of time today, but we wanted to, since it's rare to get all these wonderful people on a stage at once, um, at a moment like this, we wanted to allow a few questions. I particularly want to make sure that we allow, there, I know there are some reporters in the room uh, who travel down to take part in this as well, so if you have a question, let me know, and I will try to direct it to the right person. Or we can move straight to the reception. Here's a question. <laughs> Hi. Uh, 
Hi, it's Sandra Guy with the Chicago Sun Times. Hi, Sandra. Um, hi. Just curious, um, what the cost and uh, funding uh, will be, please. I could. Do you want to take a stab at that, Steve? Be or happy to take that. Uh, the uh, we are targeting 148 million dollars for the total construction cost. Uh, now, as far as the funding goes, as with many of, as with all of our major capital projects, there's a variety of funding sources that we turn to, including philanthropy. And for the residence halls project, given that there is a uh, funding source through room and board, that there's uh, a, a long-term plan to be covering the cost for this. Other questions? In back, please. Uh, the um, the Legoretta dorms were kind of like an experiment in color. Is Are the new dorms sort of a response to that and in terms of playing off the traditional co uh, campus with a more neutral uh, kind of look and feel? Uh, thanks, Lynn, for that question. Um, I think we were, we were trying to make the building be true to its materials, which is a concrete um, material, which is a fluid material, allows us to get the three-dimensionality and, and those warp surfaces of the panels, um, and didn't feel the need to add color to that. Um, I do think that, the, and then the, that is um, enhanced by the, um, the, mater the materiality of the windows and the grills, which will be more true to their essence, so probably a bronze or metallic um, color and not an added color. I, I'm really interested in letting the student life be the color and, and to really come forward, especially as they take over the house hubs, which we know they will, and to plan those to be very robust in nature and, and just really let them um, evolve for, for each unique group of students that come in and take it over. Can you tell me the heights on the towers and how construction will affect the Hyde Park community? Construction. So the top the tower, tower, 165 feet. Right. Yeah. 15 so floors on the tallest building. And, and then 11 and 5. Right. And we're actually working through with Greg Werner and, and his team and Jeannie and hers and many in the university to mitigate any adverse impacts of construction on the surrounding community by carefully orchestrating where uh, construction vehicles enter and depart, uh, managing uh, all of the uh, you know, uh, access uh, to and from the site throughout the uh, duration of construction. We'll be following all of the uh, city rules for uh, time of work um, and actually going beyond that for any of you who are uh, residents of the University of Chicago campus, um, I think maybe you can attest to our efforts to manage the impact of construction. So I think I have 12 questions, so I'll try and be quick. Uh, can you give me a sense of the timeline for this project is the first question. The second question is... Uh, you don't get all 12, Sam. Uh, can I, how about three? We'll give you two. No, give me th three and I'll be done, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the, the, number one is the timeline. Number two is the, you know, the names Pierce and the four houses that were in Pierce have a long history and legacy to them. What's gonna happen to those? Are they gonna be incorporated in the new building? Um, and three is, Jeannie, you are the architect for Hyde Park anymore. Can you compare this project to the other big ones you've done in the neighborhood? So maybe start out with Steve on timeline, Karen, a little bit on house names, and then. Timeline, we expect to be able to welcome students uh, just over three years from now. So the fall 2016 uh, term, we'll be uh, welcoming them. And we've only just, um, we will only just begin conversations about how to honor the houses that exist in the, the current Pierce Tower um, and work with our students um, around how to um, honor those house communities and um, think about moving those specific house names to the new building, how that should be done. Um, but we've got a little bit of time ahead of us to have conversations about that so it, it reflects the, the wishes of our students and, and reflects the, the spirit of those house communities, which are very deep. Um, to do with the, the other projects that we are, we are, we are working um, on a number of renovation projects in Hyde Park, including the Shoreland. 
um, transferring that into apartments. Um, and I think th this just, for me, it, it, it reinforces the idea that um, Hyde Park is really becoming a really beautiful place to live. And for instead of running away to downtown, students can, and faculty can live right here in Hyde Park and be part of this community. Um, and so you just see more and more offerings. So it, over the last few years, I'm working on the other projects in Hyde Park, it really started to um, boost our collective familiarity with you know, what's going on, where students want to go, how do people move throughout the space. Um, and that really led us to that um, emphasizing this diagonal and the, the open corner. And instead of walling it off to the neighborhood, it's really kind of opening up in a two-way communication between the project and the city. If I, could I add one more comment yeah. on that, which may or may not be obvious to anybody who's familiar with that site right now, but right at that uh, intersection of 55th and University, where you saw the beautiful portal coming into the campus, today there's a loading dock there and a wall along half the length of that block of 55th Street. So dramatically different attitude about how uh, through Jeannie and her colleagues work, the university is looking to intersect with and engage with the surrounding community. Yes, please. Jeannie Gang, is there anything positive you've learned from Harry Weiss's Pierce in thinking about the design for the new towers? Um, in fact, yes. Um, that w the, the building, even though it was, you know, it's at the end of its effective life, we we have learned that it is a beloved building, and and the quality of the um, common areas, the the places where students interact, um, really worked because people who live there still come, they, they come back and they came back to see the building, say goodbye to the building. But um, so we tried to incorporate that um, kind of vitality in the house hubs in this new design. And one of the ways was really, and I think Harry Weiss did this really well, was making it possible for um, students to people watch, you know, see who's coming and going. And we've done that in a different way but by creating this, what we call the cascading lounge. So the, the section of the lounge space actually steps so you can actually get those eye contacts throughout the, the opening of the space. So I think it has some hairy weiss in it and hopefully, and I think there's, there's other ways too, but we'll have to develop it some more to be able to talk about those. I think we've got time for one more question. I know we talked a little bit about funding before. Is there any possibility of using TIF funds down the line, or? I'm not aware that that's been a consideration that's been raised, so. Um, so this residence hall is a mix of different types of living spaces for students, and I wonder, Karen and John, if you could just say a word quickly about what's the intention around students of different points along their career being in this hall, why does that matter? You know, what's the vision around that? Sure. Um, as, as we develop this project, we've had many, many conversations with students and had focus groups and heard from students who have lived in Pierce for many, many years and students who have lived in all of our other residence halls. And, and one of the things we heard um, was that as students move from their first to fourth year, they want more independence, they want more autonomy, they want to be able to cook together, they want to be able to go shopping and, and make their own meal. Um, and so how could the university create spaces, create apartments that allow them to stay on campus and still have the support of the college house system, but be able to have that kind of autonomy and independence? And so we're so excited about this design because it allows students to um, stay on campus and, and have that sort of critical mass that really contributes to a highly engaged campus while they're also able to be more independent and more autonomous. Um, and one other point that's I think important to note is that we really value the four class house system. So we value first years living with fourth years and second years living with third years and what that means for mentoring and learning about the college, learning about the core curriculum, 
And this design allows us to um, operationalize those values. Yeah, I, I would say the, the um, um, a few years ago, I had an opportunity to write a short history of the student housing, basically making the case that we should build this dorm. So it's, uh, it's with some uh, uh, great appreciation and, uh, that I, I find myself sitting here today next to our brilliant architect. Um, the, um, if you go back in the history of the university, uh, the, the, the files are f filled with reports from faculty committees arguing that, uh, that we should um, house a, a very large percentage of our students and we should do so in the way that Karen just articulated, namely that we should not have freshman dorms or senior dorms or this dorm or that dorm. The housing system ought to reflect the culture and the, the milieu, the student milieu of, of, the whole, of the whole college, the whole university. So I think the, um, our goal is the... Um, and I think we've achieved it in, in the first of these two great halls that I mentioned, Pulaski and, and, and South. And I think it will be the, even more of the case in this, in this uh, great hall uh, to have all four years of, of the students living together in, in a multi-generational community. I know that some of our speakers have to go. Some will be able to stay and chat with some of you in the live audience. There are some refreshments, so please feel free to stay with us. Um, for both our live audience and for the webcast audience, you can get another look at some of these renderings and the videos and be able to delve in a little deeper. Um, just go to our university's homepage, www.uchicago.edu. As I say, we hope this is just the beginning of the conversation. We look forward to engaging with you all in the months and years to come. Let's thank our speakers one more time, please.